what is up everyone welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing some test hands here for the destruction sword deck that i recently profiled plus i also demonstrated a few combos in a combo video just prior to this one so definitely do check it out before you look at these test hands that way you could actually get a good idea of how this deck actually works however if you do enjoy this video definitely drop a like and share this video as well if you want to support this channel it really does help and of course subscribe if you want to see more videos like this however with that being said let's just begin all right so here's our first opening test tan definitely uh, not bad at all we could still uh, work with this so what we can do here is obviously clear the board um, if the opponent has anything but we are going first so it is going to be different here, but we could summon out our Vishida really easily because we have no effect monsters. Normal summon out our Buster Whelp, and as we know, we can just search out whatever card we want. We already have Memories, and we already have our Buster Blader in the hand. I think that's really amazing. So with that being said, let's just search for something that we could really use uh, later down the line to benefit us. So I'm just going to go for the Dragon Buster. I think it's a really powerful card. Next up, we can take our Buster Whelp and our Vishida, and we're going to link some of them both away, and this will allow us to go for our Protector Whelp. Protector Whelp can send off one card to the graveyard, and then special summon our Buster Blader from the hand. So we're just going to get rid of our Buster Blader, because we do need one extra copy in the graveyard anyway, and we're going to summon out our Buster Blader from our hand. Next up, we're going to summon out our Buster Whelp from the graveyard, by discarding a destruction sword card luckily we drew into memories so that goes and now we have these two allowing us to then go for a synchro summon which in this case we bring out our buster dragon uh, you don't actually have to go for the link zones here it doesn't really matter you can put them anywhere and that's kind of like the extra bonus but we could use buster dragon's effect and just revive our buster blader uh, to whichever zone we actually want Next up from the graveyard, we're going to banish off uh, the memories and of course we have our extra Buster Blader plus our Buster Whelp and this will allow us to go for our Buster Blader Fusion. Of course it doesn't really matter where you put it in which zones, um, ideally if you don't block the zones from Protect the Whelp then you could potentially bring out more Link monsters onto the board. But with that being said, you could finally take your Dragon Buster and equip it to your Buster Blader and you essentially establish your lockdown. Very powerful, very effective. Your opponent's definitely going to have a hard time getting over this unless they have a Kaiju or a Lava Golem. All right, so this one is very different, I'll say. I mean, I could still play with this, but drawing into the Buster Blader is something that kind of caught me off guard here. Uh, though let's just see how things turn out. So we have our Buster Whelp, which will at least allow us to search for our Buster Blader, uh, the Destruction Swordsman, thank goodness. But aside from that, we could also just uh, go for a Wear Aftel, and this will allow us to search for our Jester Confit. And of course we could Special Summon that out, and link these two away allowing us to go for our Link Monster Protect the Whelp over here. So in this case, we could ditch off our one Destruction Sword card to the graveyard. In this case, I think I'll go for... Well, I mean, regardless, it's going to be the same thing, right? So uh, what we could actually do here is just uh, ditch off our Buster Blader. And we could Special Summon out a Buster Blader from our hand which is actually pretty interesting because honestly we don't have to search for this. With Buster Whelp we could actually just search for the Dragon Buster, that wouldn't actually be uh, the worst option here because from that we could still bring out the Buster Whelp by discarding our memories and with that being said we go for the same play once more but this time with the Buster Blader. So we bring out this and of course we go for our Buster Blader. We could even go for this one because I honestly think this one is stronger and of course we could banish off this over here and that will simply allow us to uh, summon out this as well and of course we can equip this making it very powerful um, additionally we do also have 
our prologue, which is very powerful because the thing is this, if the opponents uh, want to get through anything, they're going to want to get rid of the Buster Dragon because it could also recur back your Buster Blader. So with that being said, when they actually get rid of this, uh, you simply activate your prologue and you could just uh, go for another Buster Dragon, either from your extra deck or even your graveyard. Very powerful, very effective. Um, so yeah, this is definitely really nice here to start off with. Alright, so a bit odd here. I mean, we did draw into something uh, very different. So with that being said, let's just uh, give this a different go here. So I'm just going to go for one for one. And this will allow us to at least bring out a level 1 monster. Uh, in this case, you could go for your Dragon Buster if you actually wanted to. Uh, that is definitely an option. Let's see, should I actually go for that? I mean, there isn't really a harm. I mean, we could definitely go for that. Just because um, it really doesn't do much else if we draw into it. So I'll just go for that and I'll normal summon out Buster Whelp. And this will allow us to add a card uh, to our hand. So in this case, I'll probably go for Memories. Should I go for Memories? Should I not? Uh, maybe I'll actually just go for another copy of the... Where is it? Uh, the Dragon Buster. That should work out because uh, we can take these two and go for Protect the Whelp again. And this will allow us to then ditch off our... Uh, memories which would special summon out uh, our card over here and of course we could then um, special summon this back out discarding that go for the foolish as well which would allow us to ditch off one more card I'm ditching off Buster Blader um, and of course with that we could take these two synchro summon them going for our Buster Dragon which will bring this back out and of course, uh, we could then go for our Fusion Summon, uh, banishing off these two. So it's really nice because it at least allows us to keep our resources uh, on the board. Uh, and we still get the lockdown. Unfortunately, we do not have the Dragon Buster equipped to this. So a bit of a letdown there, but that's okay. Uh, this is still definitely a very powerful lock. It's not like the opponent's going to have any ease getting through this. All their monster effects are actually negated anyway. They can't even attack you because everything's going to be switched to defense. So with that being said, this is pretty much what we have. So that was pretty much it for today's video. You guys might have noticed that in all three test stands, I managed to actually get out the lockdown combo. Obviously, not all of them included the Dragon Buster in the final board, but that's okay. We still got the main lock in anyway, and that's pretty much the whole point of this deck. This whole deck has pretty much been optimized to go for that opening combo every single time. And you want to accomplish that particular combo. If you can't go into it, it's still okay. You could go into alternative methods. It's just that you do want that ideal opening. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. However, you could also adjust this deck. I've seen builds where people have actually incorporated the Tenyi, the Crusadia, uh, it's just a really interesting kind of build. Even the Guard Dragons as a whole can actually extend this deck quite a bit. However, that was pretty much my take on it and I'm really happy with how it's actually turned out. I just wish that there was more variety in different plays. I do have to actually wonder whether or not I should even bother doing test hands going second because I will be trying to achieve the same board and it's most likely going to happen anyway. Although, it would be pretty interesting to see if we actually do brick with this deck. Now, this deck does brick. Sometimes you won't open up with the most ideal hand to go into that most ideal board. However, that happens maybe 4 out of 10 times. So, if you're opening up with 10 different test hands, at least 4 of those opening test hands will brick. So, I guess if that happens in test hands going second, then it could actually be a great demonstration of this deck's flaws. But nevertheless, do comment down below your thoughts, and if you can support this channel, definitely just watch one more video. However, thanks for joining me today, I hope you all have a brilliant day, I'll see you all next time.